What's up, world? It's me, Nez. Welcome to Nez Tele, here to give you interesting suggestions of books that you could read. And today, I am excited about this book. It's called Becoming Nigerian by Eliton John. But first of all, welcome. Thank you for coming by. If this is your first time, welcome. I love you in the love of the Lord. <laughs> and then, of course, if you're coming back, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, hope, hope you're taking out time to read and hope and hope everything is going the way that you would like it to be, you know. How is the semi-lockdown going through, you know, wherever it, wherever in the world that you are. Okay, so today I was talking, I said I wanted to talk about Becoming Nigerian. Oh boy, this book I like is like Becoming Nigerian, aka The Shade Book. This book, when I say through shade, shade, bam, bam, bam. <laughs> At a point I'll read, I'll dodge my head. Oh my God, shade. <laughs> I'm like, let it not reach me. It's a flyover. <laughs> oh my god, this book is funny. Um, okay, first of all, it's written by a man called Elton, Elton John. I hope I pronounced that word well. Elton John apparently did. He's known for this. He's known for writing books that, as in, he's trying to say something, but he says this in another way, which makes it very interesting. In the literature world, it's called a satire. I was hoping I wouldn't use that word in this video because I think a lot of us may not know what it is. But that's what it means. A satire is like, like I don't even know if you read Animal Farm, where animals were used to tell the story of Napoleon Budapest. This is the second or third time I mentioned that name. Please, if you don't know the person, go and Google him. Napoleon Budapest. Okay, so back to. Um, being Nigerian, so this man basically went. When I said this guy threw shade, he went in like he went on to explain. Like, basically, he was doing something, something that I actually don't appreciate on a normal day, but he did it in a very interesting way. That's why I was able to sit down and sit through the book. He did this thing where you know, that's the thing that a lot of Nigerians do. Like, I call them the arm ear, armchair analyst people that sit down on TV. The problem of Nigeria is this, the problem of Nigeria is that, the problem with Nigeria is this one, the problem is that no solution. A problem everywhere. It's like we have a house problem, we have a pest problem. One person said the problem is that there's a rat in the house. Then you go on and analyze. The rat comes in from here, there's a hole from here, it does like this, it comes like this, it eats the yam, it scatters the this one, it makes the children afraid. You sit down and analyze the problem. You don't wake up one day and say, Okay, this is what we can do to kill this rat. That thing and raised me like this. But he did the same thing, but the way he did it made it possible for me to read. Now, my emotion with this book was like, Okay, I was laughing a lot at first. Then after a while, I stopped laughing because in the end, they are talking about me here. Honestly, I had to go and do a search after I finished it because I had to be sure that he was Nigerian. Because if he wasn't Nigerian, I think the pain would have been would have been higher or stronger. But he is Nigerian. He's from I think Kaduna or Kano, or at least he was born there. I don't know whether I don't know if that's where he's from. The man is actually relatively young. He's won several like he's been nominated for several prizes. He's a very impressive young man, I must say. Anyway, this book, eh? This book is like I feel like if it's possible to throw a must read out there, this book is a must read for most Nigerians, even people that are not Nigerian. The guy went in, he thought about worshipping the Nigerian God. This worshipping Nigerian God, like I've always, this is something that a conversation I've had a lot with my king when it comes to um, the way we worship God as Nigerians. Like a friend of ours uh, got robbed once, like she was, her car got jacked and she was put into the boot and this armed robbers took the car to go on a stealing. They went and robbed several people and she was in the boot the whole time. Anytime they, want, they stopped and they wanted to enter somewhere, they would open the boot and tell this friend of mine, a lady, to come out and pray for them. Pray so that they can go and rob. That is, that's, it's just like, it's just one of those things that I, I don't quite get it. The kidnappers that you know, they pray. Even Babalao that you know, they, they shall still pray. Anyway, the guy talked about the Nigerian God. I found that very interesting. He talked about the Nigerian pastor, being a Nigerian pastor, and then the private jet. That private jet one, he's always doing like, enter my head, because I don't quite understand. Um, I think in CSU, over 1,500 churches are registered, right? But out of all the pastors, now feel free to prove me wrong. Like you can name more. Oh, the ones me I can name off the top of my head because I've done that, I've done that research several times. How many churches do their pastors have private jets? I only know five, or even four, I think. Because the fifth one I heard that he actually doesn't have. There is a member that has, so he he. But the member lets him use it, so it's actually not his own. So that's five um, uh, pastors that we know. So it's like out of let's say there there are one thousand five hundred churches registered in the whole of Nigeria. So that's like one thousand five hundred. Um, general overseers and only five and then every time anybody talks about pop, uh, church people say eh, it's only private jet you know i'm like i mean think about it there are not that many that have private jets so why is private jet always a constant conversation anyway it was like a conversation he put it inside the book and it was funny it was nice um he talked about being a nigerian writer now the funny thing about being a nigerian writer he talked about a lot of the things i had talked about in um 
in when I talked about um, Dear Nigerian Author or Dear Nigerian Writer, I remember I, I did that not too long ago. I'll, I'll link it in the description so you can see it if you're interested. Um, where I talked about you know the issues that in my mind I have with um, authors in Nigeria, Dear Nigerian Author. That was that was nice. I liked that being a Nigerian journalist. I'm like, mm. okay, here's one thing you find very interesting about this guy. This guy knows too much. He knows too much. He knows like you you can tell he's he's a lawyer. Oh, you talked about being a Nigerian lawyer by the way. Um, he, uh, he knows a lot. Like, I'm not saying too much is bad. I'm saying too much is like he knows a lot. With the way he talks about the things, you can tell that he's not just throwing things in the air. These are things that he has seen. It's about being this Nigerian NGO, having a Nigerian NGO, even a kidnapper. That kidnapping one got me a little spooked because he changed his tone. There, he was talking as if he was talking to a kidnapper. Like he was kidnapped and the kid he was begging the kidnapper, please. Don't kill me. We know the police are not going to come for us. But we can play what? Whatever he eats, I'll eat. Don't worry, we are friends. Me, I don't have any money, but anything they find, they find, they give you. Please take it and be happy. I'm not a rich person, you know. So, that's even being this like a Nigerian, an expatriate into Nigeria, traveling out of Nigeria, the way he behaves yourself outside Nigeria. The guy really tries to cover as many grounds as possible. But this book is good. Like I think it's worth, it's worth the noise. Clearly, okay. I didn't even talk about where I saw this book. This book basically. I, I was thinking in my head, okay, I'm reading too many Nigerian books. Not like I'm reading too many, but like it's an African uh, theme month, right? Let's read other African countries. And I went to Google, literally, I did a search. Where do I find, you know, like top 10 African books to read right now in 2020? And I found this place called, I think it's called Writer's Author's Agreement or Writer's Agreement, something like that. So I went there and 10 books were listed. And this book was listed in Nigeria. And even though I hadn't actually planned to read a Nigerian book, I saw the book and I said, hey, let's read it. And I took it. I think it's worth it. It's quite a treat. It's, it's, it's I don't know, it's fun. I like I like the book. It's a nice expand, mind, mental expanding this. Now he did this thing where in the beginning, he was talking about um, the book like, like it's a Bible. Like, blessed are those who covet and, and reap the poor of all their money for theirs is the kingdom of political rebirth something very random and ridiculous like that so things like that he went into polit politics went even even, to, even into things like you know what's the romance in nigeria is like what love is like nigeria how it's different i don't know it's just it's just again i'm so sorry i'm sweating um I don't know, this book is worth it. I think it's worth everything. I don't, we don't have the time. For I had time. There was a part I actually wrote that. So let me try and read it for you. That's, that he actually, that's part of the book. But it's pretty long. If I try to read that, I think it's going to take around uh, one minute and I don't want to. So I, I don't know if you've read this book or if you've heard of this book. It was available on Script. It's Script. I read it on the e version. So you can check out Script, um, download the app, and you can get one month for free. Um, I got that there. Then um, you can check him. Um, I know it's available on Roving Heights. So if you check out Roving Heights, you'll be able to get the book. And voila. It's totally worth it. And the book is actually very popular. Like I read, um, I was I was listening to a tweet by Omojua. I don't know if you know Omojua. I was looking, looking at a tweet from Omojua and Omo, um, Omojua had asked what book are you reading and why are you reading it? And out of like, let's say 50 tweets or so, about five people mentioned this particular book. I'm like, okay, so this book is this popular. That's cool. So I think if you're Nigerian, even if you're not Nigerian, just read this book and have a good laugh. And then it's a great way to sit down and think about what, what we're doing. And then, I don't know, help you. Ooh, another person, another thing I wanted to ask you was that when you ask people where they are from, why do you do that? Because in the end, he did this thing where he started writing some interesting um, Nigerian terms that we use and what they actually mean. So it's like, where are you from? And he said, um, um, it's basically so that I can know where you're from. So I, could, I will know whether I should like you or I should hate you. Now, funny enough, when I ask people where they're from, that's not, that's not why I do it. So I, I'm like, he's so wrong here. Now, there are a lot of things I said I, I didn't agree with, but that doesn't mean that it's not a legit book to read. So it's like that now got me thinking, why do you... Why do you why do you ask people where they are from? Like think about it. Give me comment give me some give me some comments. Let me know why do you ask people where they are from? Like when you meet a, a fellow Nigerian and you ask the person, why are you from? Person tell them from me. Why? What's the point? Try and think about it too. Don't just don't look for it. Say, eh, because of blah, blah, blah. No. Think about it. When you actually ask people where they are from. Are you trying to put them in a box? Are you trying to analyze them and all that? Thank you so much for watching. Again, sorry for the sweat. This heat is too much. Thank you for watching. And if you haven't already, please subscribe, shoot me a like if you like this video. And spread the gist. More people should read this book. I think this book, I'll call it a must read, even though I can't tell you what to read though. But I think it's a must read and I think it's worth the everything that you, that you may go through to get it. Enjoy your weekend. Bye-bye now.